All right, picking up on problem 21 or 31 from the 2017 practice exam. We got that each value in a sample has been transformed by multiplying by three and then adding 10. So we're doing some linear transformation action here. If the original sample had a variance of four, what is the variance of the transformed sample? Okay. Okay, so if you remember like, um, maybe you can, if it's usually written as, y equals alpha plus beta x, or y maybe equals a plus bx, um, usually in the stats books. Um, so the b is the multiplying, the a is the adding the constant. And when you add const, when you add, so okay, well, so for um, measures um, of center, they only get changed by b. Measures of center are like, um, like standard deviation, IQR, um, that sort of thing. Range, you know. <clears throat> then there's centers of then there's just cent, then there's um of there's then there's just regular values. Um, but right now we're dealing with the measure of spread. So it doesn't matter if you the adding doesn't change it. Because think about it. Like when you um let's say like let's say you're let's say you're six feet and your buddy's uh eight feet tall he's, he's tall for some reason um the spread between you two got between both you and your buddy is two feet you're two feet apart if you were to add 10 feet to your heights you would be 16 feet you would be 18 feet you're still two feet apart your your height is much greater but your sp the spread doesn't change by adding numbers but it does change by multiplying if you're to multiply your height by three you become 18 feet. If you multiply his height by three, 24 feet. Um, so it, it changes it, it changes spread when you multiply. Though um, with variance, it's a little more than that because um, variance is, um, if you remember standard deviation, and the usual, like with standard deviation, standard deviations multiply. But variance is equal to the standard deviation squared. That's what the variance is. This is what the variance is equal to, standard deviation squared. So what you're going to have to do is multiply by 3 squared, by 3 by 3. Um, that's really kind of the simplest way you can put it. That's really how the math works um, for me. And you could always look at a rigorous exa or an example or um, and dealing with random variables and all that. But I'm not going to go into all that because I know it can be overwhelming, but standard deviation is just multiply by the number and with variance, if it's something like this, um, the, it's gonna be that number squared. You're multiplying it squared because again, just think of it as because the variance is standard deviation squared. So if you change the standard deviation by three, you're changing the, standard, the variance by a factor of nine. So here we're gonna multiply um, by three squared or by nine. So the variance had a variance was four. So we go four times nine. And it's going to change to 36. All right, 32. A controversial issue in the sport of professional soccer is the use of instant replay for making a difficult goal line decision. Each person is a representative sample of 100 players, fans, coaches, and officials was asked for his or her opinion about the use of instant replay for goal line decision. The data are summarized in a two way frequency table below. So favor use, oppose use. Mm, of course, <laughs> yeah, the officials are not going to want to do that. Plus, it takes a lot of time, and players, yeah, obviously care. Fans care, yeah. Um, no, I, I don't I'm play much soccer, but yeah, I can imagine with the with the game where you don't where, where there's not that many points. Every point matters. Anyways, um, so in testing to see whether opinion with respect to the use of instant replays independent of the category of the person interview. A chi squared test statistic of 27 point, a chi squared test statistic of 27.99 and a p value less than 0 0.001 was calculated. Which of the following statements is correct? Okay, so the number of degrees of freedom for this test is eight minus one or seven. Um, it's not that, I guess you have to just remember with degrees of freedom, chi squared tables, you have rows and columns. One less than the row times one less than the column, but it's not that. It's not going to be that. I don't. And I don't, they wouldn't like give you. Any, they wouldn't. They wouldn't want to test you on that either. It's not. 
what they're going to be looking for. The chi square should not have been used because two of the counts in the table are less than five. Interesting. No, not going to be that either. Um, the null hypothesis states that there's an association between category and opinion about the use of, and, okay, so I'm sure they're gonna be, so yeah, so that's what they're, they wanna see, is there, so is there an association between um, the, what per, what what type of, per, well, what the category of person, the type of person, if they're a player, fan, is it coach, referee, is there a relationship between who they are and whether or not they favor or oppose use? So that's what you wanna think about. Now, that there is an association about the use of instant replay, the small p value suggests that null hypothesis should be rejected. Association between category and opinion about the use of instant replay. And a small p value suggests that null hypothesis should be rejected. Should be rejected. This is, oh yeah, this almost got me. Um, it says the null hypothesis states that there's an association. So the null hypothesis would state that there is no association. That's what independence means. Kind of brain freeze there. Um, so that's this is what's wrong about it. This part is actually right, but the null hypothesis would say that there is no association or they're, you know, they're in, in their independent. So it's not gonna be C. This, D, the small p-value suggests that there is evidence of an association between category and opinion about the instant, instant replay. Yeah, because we got a, we got a p-value of really, really small. Um, so yeah, that means we have statistically significant evidence to, to claim that like there is a relationship between, you know, whether between who you are and whether or not you favor use. Um, yeah, makes sense. 33. A large clinical trial was, was designed to determine whether a certain vitamin improves the general health of adults. Investigators first identified 85 variables that measure various aspects of the general health of adults because, because each adult in the clinical, clinical trial was to serve as his or her own control. The 85 variables were measured for each adult, both before taking the, the vitamin and after taking the vitamin for three months. I didn't, shouldn't have paused there, but... They are measured before and after, and the investigators performed 85 match paired t-tests, one for each variable. They found statistically significant results at the 0.05 level in two of the variables. So uh, two out of the 85, I already know what they're getting at, but uh, two out of 85, they were they had like significant statistically significant evidence. So. Let me just mention, talk about this because this is something uh, that I, I heard actually happens in real studies or could, or people may mis mislead others. Like if you're, when you're testing so many things within the same, you know, um, same group, then it's the odds are that one of them that you're going to get a couple that will um, show that show will, that will show something that will show us again that you have significant evidence that they'll pass, you know, the p-test. They'll have a value less than 0.05 just because just due to luck, just due to the, the chance, just due to luck. You know, it's just lucky. Like a, if someone wins a lottery usually every single time, right? They, it doesn't mean that they know. Like you, a billion people play it, someone's going to win. It doesn't mean that they actually know what numbers to pick. Um, so that's what's going on here. Like we, we should expect that. Especially five percent. If it's if it's five percent, then five percent of the of the kind of the the, the logic is five percent of the um, time you'll get results just by luck. I mean, you'll get the you'll get the statistically significant results by luck. Um, so what we got here it would be. So yeah, so, so C, there's insufficient evidence that the vitamin improves the health of adults because at the, the 0.05 significance level, one could easily get statistically significant results two out of 85 tests due to just chance variability. Yeah, so C is our answer. This is a good one to know just for real life. 
A sample of 942 homeowners are classified in the two-way table in the two-way frequency table below by the number of credit cards they have and the number of years they have owned their current homes. Okay, one, two, three, four, or more, or more number of years owning the home. So one of the homeowners in the sample who have four more credit cards, so only with these ones, given they have four more credit cards, what proportion of them have owned their current homes for at least a year? Okay, so we're only, we only care about this row here. Let me use the red. What proportion have owned their current homes for at least a year? So we're gonna take this one year to three years plus this out of this. This is the total 58 plus 20. So 78 out, 78 out of the 212. This one's really simple, I think, or I guess it's just making it's just, I guess it's just making sure you know how to read these types of tables correctly. So the answer would be A. Thirty-five. Administrators at a state university computed the mean GPA for juniors and seniors majoring in either physics or chemistry. The results are displayed in the table below when juniors and seniors are grouped together. Could physics majors have a higher mean GPA than chemistry majors? Okay, see, they left this blank, okay? Now, they don't tell us anything about how many there are, how many juniors there are, or how many seniors there are. And doesn't they don't tell us if, if they're the same? You, they don't, yeah, they don't tell us if you have the same amount of students. So, like, like okay, so I guess what they want to trick you with is that, well, this is lower than that, you know? Like two, and then 3.2 is lower than 3.6. So then, oh, okay, but then physics for sure is going to be lower. Um, not necessarily because. You don't know how you could have. You don't know how many physics students you're gonna have. Um, like, what if you only have one chemistry student with three point six? One senior. What if you only have one chemistry student with three point? Maybe one. Maybe you only have two total chemistry students. That's possible. And maybe you have. Um, that would be a three point three. Oh, well, that wouldn't work actually. Let's do this. That would be if you had two. That would drop it down to like a, like a three point one. Yeah, that would drop it down to something we could work with. Or let's just say you had 10 3 .0s students and one 3.6, then GPA is almost 3.0. Then, yeah, I mean, and you know, you had like a thousand seniors in physics. I'm just, you know, coming up with the random examples, but no, it's really going to be due to the number that we don't know about the amount of students comes down to the amount, we, that could definitely throw the math around. We're not given any information about that. So it's possible physics majors can end up having a higher one. Um, so yeah, it depends on the number of juniors and seniors in each majors. It could happen. All right, I'm gonna take a break on this one. So um, again, Give me feedback if you you know if you like whether good or bad if I ex am explaining something correctly or or if you have trouble understanding something let me let me know give me give me your give me your questions in the comment section and um, if you thought you know I'm doing a good job give me a like and of course subscribe and I'll see you guys in the final video for this um, multiple choice section I'm gonna go over 36 and 40 so see you guys then.